Let's get technical on four link suspension design. So last week you saw that I pulled the CJ in and completely stripped it down to a bare frame. So this week I want to do all of the four link calculations to get the best handling suspension that I can for this Jeep. So one of the first things I need to establish is the center line of the crank. I need to get this in between the frame rails and nice and far back with clearance in between the firewall and the back of the engine. And I want to keep the center of gravity low in this Jeep and still maintain about a 19 to a 20 inch belly pan clearance off the ground. So my Jeep's a 1963. It's an early CJ, so it's what's known as a short nose. In 74, I believe, maybe 75, they added four inches to the length of the hood and fenders so that you have much more engine bay room. It's pretty challenging to put an LS into an early CJ. So now that the Jeep's up at ride height, we know the center line of the crank, we know the wheelbase, we know the height off the ground to the frame. Now we can start calculating for all of the links for the four link, the double triangulated and the single triangulated four links. Here's a really good side by side comparison of the JK and the CJ. The CJ is gonna have a 112 inch wheelbase and the JK has got a 96 inch wheelbase. The JK has got a four and a quarter inch lift and the CJ is gonna have about the same amount of lift as the JK. So one thing for me to consider while designing the suspension is I still need this Jeep to drive at least 55 miles an hour. I'm not going to put it on interstates obviously, but I do need to use back highways to get to my local trails. I've got a ton of local trails within an hour and a half of me that I do intend on driving to. I don't want to have to trailer this thing everywhere, I do want to be able to drive it. Let's go over the three most important factors to consider when you're designing a four link suspension. All right, so I've got a link to this four link calculator down in the description. So let's open it up and get into it. You ready? Let's get technical. When you're designing the suspension for a rock crawler, the three most important values you're gonna to need to consider. First is gonna be your center of gravity. The lower that you can bring your center of gravity down, the more stable your crawler will be. And the second is gonna be your roll center. And then last, but still very important, is gonna be your anti-squat slash anti-dive numbers. If you can understand and design with these three in mind, you'll be very impressed with the performance of your Jeep. There's more things to keep in mind, but these are definitely the biggest ones for suspension design. So in the next three chapters of this video, I'm going to show you how I addressed each one of these to get the best geometry that I could get packaged into this Willys frame. We're going to get deep into the four link calculator in a minute, but first we need to go over some of the most important factors to consider. I'm going to start with the quickest of the three to understand so that we don't drag this out too long. And you always got to start with your center of gravity. So we all know when the center of gravity is way up high from like a bunch of jerry cans or overlanding gear, that's just going to put your Jeep with a really high center of gravity that makes you want to flop over extremely easy. We don't want that. So the best thing you can do 
when building a Jeep is to start by lowering your center of gravity of of your like your drivetrain or anything that's heavy. Get it down now while it's still early. But of, of course, while still maintaining ground clearance. Now that the engine and transmission, the basically the drivetrain is hanging in between my frame rails, I know my center of gravity height off the ground. So that's enough for now. We all get center of gravity. It's the easiest to calculate. Okay, we'll come back to roll center a little bit later and how to adjust it and what we're shooting for with rock crawlers. But let's jump into anti-squat and anti-dive for crawling. Picture a massive 8 to 12 foot tall, really steep wall that you want to climb. Picture getting your two front tires up on the wall and now keep climbing until your rear tires just barely contact the bottom of the obstacle. Now let's stop and think about this situation. Before we crawl this, we need to understand that anti-squat is what's about to happen in the rear suspension in this situation. An anti-dive is what is about to happen to the front suspension as we try to crawl this obstacle. So a low anti-squat value is going to make the rear shocks compress and the rear end is going to squat down when you accelerate. The problem is on a big obstacle that's really steep, even when you're crawling and you accelerate slowly, if you have a low anti-squat number, it's going to compress the rear end and do three things that you do not want to happen. First, it's going to give you less traction by transferring the power into the shocks, compressing the rear, and changing the Jeep's angle of incline, making the Jeep want to roll backwards. Now imagine, instead of compressing the rear shocks, it actually lifted the rear as you started to throttle into the crawl. That would be an, a high anti-squat value. It would start to lengthen the shocks, pushing the rear axle down into the obstacle and lifting the rear of the Jeep at the same time, decreasing the angle of incline, making it feel much more stable. The higher the anti-squat value is, over 100%, the more this will happen. For technical rock crawling, you want to have anywhere in between 110% all the way up to about 150% anti-squat value with your rear four-link design. And if you can have some adjustability into your rear upper links, that way you can have that whole range, you can fine-tune the crawler in the future. So that's quite a bit of information on anti-squat, and I think you guys get it. So let's move on to anti-dive. Anti-dive, it's what's happening with the front end in this same scenario of us trying to crawl this massive wall. So for a minute, let's forget what the rear has been doing up until now. So let's only picture what the front end is about to do regarding to anti-dive in this really steep scenario. When we start to crawl, the front of the Jeep is going to do the exact opposite that the rear has been doing. If you have a low anti-dive number in the front, your Jeep will extend the suspension as the throttle is applied. When you're on a steep angle of incline and trying to go up, you actually want to suck the front end down, compressing the shocks. That way the angle of incline becomes less steep. It's kind of like when you use your front winch to suck the Jeep down. All right, guys, apologize for the boring ass reading voice, but I wanted to kind of get that out clearly. So to quickly summarize what we want to do for anti-dive and anti-squat, we do not want the front of the Jeep to raise up and we don't want the rear of the Jeep to suck down for inclines that are real steep. So basically, just shoot for high anti-dive and high 
and I squat numbers for the front and the rear and you'll be good. Could have summed this all up in this 30 second summary. Anyhow, I'll pin the end so that way you guys can just, here it is. So I know I told you guys we'd get back to roll center in this video, but I'm getting a little bored and I bet you are too. So I'm gonna keep this one short. So if you wanna click the video, I'm gonna do a separate video for roll center. Try to keep straight to the point, just roll center information. So if you wanna see that video, click up here in the right and I'll see you guys over there.